that I have the chance and honor of uh, being director of the board since uh, January 2023. And we have a primary care representative in the as the chair of the dissemination committee, Mark Levy, and Helen Rudell from Australia. She is uh, leading our science committee. And we have Gina advocates all around the world. Gina was established in 1993 by WHO. Uh, and I would like to emphasize that Gina report is not a guideline, but it is an integrated evidence-based strategy focusing on translation into clinical practice. So uh, GINA goals of preventing asthma deaths and exacerbations as well as improving symptom controls, but we very much take into account the human behavior, human behavior of not only the patients, but all the healthcare professionals and carers, and also implementation in clinical practice and primary care is so important in implementation. Uh, I do believe that we have global variation in population, health system and medication Nexus. So this is a global strategy document and regulatory approvals and submissions may differ from country to country. Since we have a global audience today, these approvals will differ. Uh, and uh, when assessing and treating patients, please use your own professional judgment and take into account your local or national guidelines, payer eligibility criteria and licensed drug doses. So what's new in Gina? Uh, in this uh, presentation, I would like to focus on the implications for primary care. These are the points that I'm going to I'm going to try to touch. First diagnosis and then asthma severity, assessment of control, cough variant asthma, treatment and simplifying track one, which we need uh, so much. So this is the new flow chart uh, of diagnosis in 2024. Uh, we know that Gina uh, knows that a large proportion of health professionals do not have access or timely access to spirometry in their clinical practice. So in this uh, algorithm, you're going to see that if spirometry is not available, you can use the peak expiratory flow. It is, it is less reliable than spirometry, but it is better than relying on symptoms alone without any objective measurement of lung function. If you are going to use peak flow meter, the best three measurements should be used each time and the same meter should be used for follow-up testing. And as measurements may differ from meter to meter by to 20%. So a detailed lung function testing uh, review you can find in GINA report. Uh, another thing is the asthma severity. Uh, we know that for severe asthma, we have a current definition of a retrospective assessment after at least two or three months of asthma treatment and from the intensity of the treatment required to control symptoms and exacerbations. This identifies patients whose asthma is relatively refractory to high intensity treatment uh, with high dose ICS lava who may benefit from additional treatment such as biologic treatment. For mild asthma, we have some concerns. I think my uh, the faculty will uh, agree with me that uh, it should be mild asthma should be generally avoided in clinic practice, impossible. If we use it, that a, a certain group of patients with infrequent symptoms can still have life-threatening exacerbations, and this risk is substantially reduced by ICS containing treatment. So, retrospective definition of mild asthma is as easy to trade, uh, it is less useful now. And uh, patients with few interval symptoms can have exacerbations. So hysterical treatment with Saba alone actually increases the risk of exacerbations. Let's come to the assessment of control. We have two domains of control, symptom control and future risk. We need to take into account of these uh, two domains. We need to assess symptom control over four weeks or longer uh, and need to identify any other risk factors for exacerbations, for example, persistent airflow limitation or side effects. And we need to measure lung function at diagnosis and at the start of the treatment and six or uh, three or six months after starting ICS containing treatment. And then periodically, at least once every one or two years and more often in high risk populations. I would like to uh, emphasize cough variant asthma because we know that this is a clinical phenotype of asthma and it's very common in some countries, especially particularly in China. And I know much of our audience is from there. So uh, cough variant asthma may be difficult to distinguish from other causes of chronic cough in clinical practice, uh, such as we know that the only abnormality on lung function 
is the bronchial propagation test if available at that country. So some patients after cough uh, variant asthma may later develop wheezing and bronchodilator responsiveness. So the treatment is the same, but I think we need long-term studies about cough variant asthma, which is very common in China. This is the new treatment figure. Uh, and there are, I must say, that there are no major changes from last year. Uh, track one is still the preferred op option, uh, low dose ICS for meterol, which is an anti inflammatory reliever. Uh, it has been the prefer preferred option since 2021. We call it AIR. And AIR reduces the risk of exacerbations compared with regimens that use SABA as reliever with symptom control and lung function. In addition, this treatment regimen is simpler. The patient is using only a single medication for reliever and maintenance treatment. Here, for the primary care, we simplify the track one. Step one and two, we merge it and we call it step one and two. And as needed, only low dose ICS for meterol as reliever. Step three and four, we have low dose and medium dose maintenance and then per needed dose. You can see here, uh, we simplify it. And whenever you want to step down from step three and step four, you can go easily to do it as needed only low dose ICS for meterol reliever. This is preferable because this of course show that the, it is, it has a huge amount of reduction, uh, in severe exacerbations. You can see here, uh, in this how to start table uh, we have uh, at the bottom for the so-called mild asthma and then the severity increases so if you want uh, to uh, start with step three mart if the patient has symptoms most days waking at night due to asthma more than once a week if they are currently smoking if they have impaired perception of bronchoconstruction if they have a severe exacerbation if they have a history of life-threatening asthma exacerbation or has severe airway hyperresponsiveness or currently exposed to seasonal allergic drink then start with step three approach of marks so i would like to summarize uh, we have uh, a new uh, definition of uh, peak expiratory flow or preference uh, if you not uh, have access to spirometry so it's better than relying on symptoms alone it's better than nothing uh, so as for severity i would like to take your attention to the mild patients have still can have severe exacerbations for the control to domain symptom control and futurists cough variant asthma is another issue treatment arms is our same and we prefer air approach anti-inflammatory reliever and also we try to simplify uh, track one for primary care that is all uh, i would like to have a quick summary of the update and uh, i would very much welcome the questions thank you thank you very much indeed now the questions have started to come in and